All right, a bit of late mail on that last episode about the Pacific common name. Turns out on the Chesapeake and Ohio, they actually wanted to adopt the name Mountain to describe the wheel arrangement. Pacific stuck, Mountain didn't. Also, the Railroad Gazette arrival to the American engineer described the type as 10-wheeler with trailing truck added. Right in 1903, the Western Australian Government Railway had a 462 type locomotive roll into service. They had in fact been ordered in 1900. The delay in delivery was because of industrial strife in the mother country. As any sensible road would do, the WAGR ordered an emergency batch of locomotives from Baldwin and they arrived into service in 1901, significantly ahead of the NZGRQ class. Also, those locomotives were reported in the North American trade literature in a meaningful sense, but again, they don't seem to have played any role in the American 462 experience. The British built locomotives were the E-Class, the Baldwins were the EC, the lowercase c standing for compound. They are in that category uh, of the trailing axle sharing the firebox with the last driving axle. So Pacific purists will have an issue with them, although I frankly don't. Neither of those two classes of locomotives were the first 462 in Western Australia because in 1897, the Miller conglomerate, a forestry company, ordered a single 462 locomotive from Baldwin and they named it Jubilee. Jubilee slightly different at the back end. A fair amount of that firebox weight, albeit a narrow firebox, is carried by the trailing truck. It could be in some alternate universe somewhere, there's someone doing a video about the origin of the common name Jubilee for the 462 wheel arrangement. But it was a small locomotive that operated in the back blocks. It did not feature largely in the collective railroad consciousness, but it does significantly predate those other 462s. Those West Australian locomotives were similar to the Milwaukee Road locomotives that I mentioned in passing in the last episode. The Milwaukee Road referred to their locomotives as the St. Paul type. They were also narrow firebox, they were really effectively 10 wheelers with an idler axle added to them to distribute weight. And that's probably more a testament of the lightweight rail in use on that system at that time because there is a story, although I can't really confirm it, that later in their existence they were converted to 10 wheelers simpliciter, probably because there was an uplift in the weight of rail on that system. Nevertheless, they are clearly 462 locomotives and they clearly predate the ones I've just been talking about. There's one more example though. The earliest I can find is 1886 on the Lehigh Valley, a locomotive designer by the name of Strong, he had some ideas about fireboxes. And on Lehigh Valley locomotive number 444, it had a firebox that was almost solely carried by the trailing axle. It's also a 462, it's also a camelback. The firebox is really interesting. It's a dual marine firebox arrangement, corrugated in construction, similar to how a Vanderbilt firebox is built, but north of it, the two fireboxes are combined into one combustion chamber and then north of that is a fairly typical fire tube boiler that we would find on the vast majority of locomotives. Because of the length of the combustion chamber and because of the width of the firebox, it had to sit behind the last driving wheels and it had to be carried by that trailing axle. Pacific Purists might have an issue with it because it's not a wide firebox, but it kind of is a wide firebox. Well, it's two narrow fireboxes that together are too wide for a 10-wheeler. Fun fact, Lehigh Valley have the monopoly on 462 Camelbacks because they also introduced this locomotive to traffic later on. Anyway, that's all I've got. Summer is cancelled here in New Zealand just now. If you're having a summer, I hope you're enjoying it. Cheers. Thank you. Like, subscribe, enjoy.